2 Samuel chapters 1 to 24. Chapter 1, The Death of King Saul. 1 Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziklag. 2 It came even to pass on the third day, that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes torn, and earth upon his head, and so it was, when he came to David, that he fell to the earth, and paid him honor. 3 And David said unto him, From where come you? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. 4 And David said unto him, How went the matter? I pray you, tell me. And he answered, The people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. 5 And David said unto the young man that told him, How know you that Saul and Jonathan his son are dead? 6 And the young man that told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and, lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. 7 And when he looked behind him, he saw me, and called unto me. And I answered, Here am I eight and he said unto me, Who are you? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. 9 He said unto me again, Stand, I pray you, upon me, and slay me, for anguish is come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. 10 So I stood upon him, and slew him, because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head, and the bracelet that was on his arm, and have brought them here unto my Lord. 11 Then David took hold on his clothes, and tore them, and likewise all the men that were with him. 12 And they mourned, and wept, and fasted until evening, for Saul, and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord, and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. 13 And David said unto the young man that told him, From where are you? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, an Amalekite. 14 And David said unto him, How were you not afraid to stretch forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? 15 And David called one of the young men, and said, Go near, and fall upon him. And he struck him so that he died. 16 And David said unto him, Your blood be upon your head, for your mouth has testified against you, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. 17 And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. 18 Also he told them to teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. 19 The beauty of Israel is slain upon your high places. How are the mighty fallen? 20 Tell it not in Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Askelon. Lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. 21 You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain, upon you, nor fields of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away, the shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. 22 From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. 23 Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided they were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. 24 You daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet, with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. 25 How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, you were slain in your high places. 26 I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan, very pleasant have you been unto me, your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. 27 How are the mighty fallen, and the weapons of war perished? Chapter 2 David is anointed as king over Judah. 1 And it came to pass after this, that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron. 2 So David went up there, and his two wives also. Ahinom the Jezreelites, and Abigail Nabal's widow the Carmelite. Three and his men that were with him did David bring up, every man with his household, and they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. Four and the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. 
And they told David, saying, The men of Jabesh Gilead were they that buried Saul. 5 And David sent messengers unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed be you of the Lord, that you have shown this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. 6 And now the Lord show kindness and truth unto you, and I also will repay you this kindness, because you have done this thing. 7 Therefore now let your hands be strengthened, and be you valiant, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. Ishbosheth is made king over Israel. 8 But Abner the son of Ner, captain of Saul's army, took Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. 9 And made him king over Gilead, and over the Asherites, and over Jezreel, and over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and over all Israel. 10 Ishbosheth Saul's son was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. 11 And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. David's victory over Ishbosheth. 12 And Abner the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth the son of Saul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. 13 And Joab the son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David, went out, and met together by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down, the one on the one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. 14 And Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise, and play before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. 15 Then there arose and went over by number twelve of Benjamin, which pertained to Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. 16 And they caught every one his fellow by the head, and thrust his sword in his fellow's side, so they fell down together, therefore that place was called Helketh Hazaram, which is in Gibeon. 17 And there was a very fierce battle that day, and Abner was beaten, and the men of Israel, before the servants of David. 18 And there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Joab, and Abishai, and Asahel, and Asahel was as light of foot as a wild roe. 19 And Asahel pursued after Abner, and in going he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner. 20 Then Abner looked behind him, and said, Are you Asahel? And he answered, I am. 21 And Abner said to him, Turn you aside to your right hand or to your left and lay you hold on one of the young men, and take you his armor. But Asahel would not turn aside from following him. 22 And Abner said again to Asahel, Turn you aside from following me, why should I strike you to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab your brother? 23 However he refused to turn aside. Therefore Abner with the blunt end of the spear struck him under the fifth rib, so that the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there, and died in the same place, and it came to pass, that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died stood still. 24 Joab also and Abishai pursued after Abner, and the sun went down when they were come to the hill of Amma, that lies before Jaya by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. 25 And the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together after Abner, and became one troop, and stood on the top of a hill. 26 Then Abner called to Joab, and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Know you not that it will be bitterness in the latter end? How long shall it be then, before you bid the people return from following their brethren? 27 And Joab said, As God lives, unless you had spoken, surely then in the morning the people would have gone up every one from following his brother. 28 So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still and pursued after Israel no more, neither fought they any more. 29 And Abner and his men walked all that night through the plain, and passed over Jordan, and went through all Bithron, and they came to Mahanaim. 30 And Joab returned from following Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, there lacked of David's servants nineteen men and Asahel. 31 But the servants of David had struck down Benjamin, and Abner's men, so that three hundred and threescore men died. 32 And they took up Asahel, and buried him in the sepulchre of his father, which was in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at break of day. Chapter 3. David's Strength Increases. 
1. Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David grew stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. 2. And unto David were sons born in Hebron, and his firstborn was Ammon, of Ahinom the Jezreelites, 3. And his second, Chalib, of Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third, Absalom the son of Makkah the daughter of Talmai king of Geshur, 4. And the fourth, Adonijah the son of Hagit, and the fifth, Shephatiah the son of Abidal, 5. And the sixth, Ithrim, by Egla David's wife. These were born to David in Hebron. The murder of Abner. 6. And it came to pass, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. 7. And Saul had a concubine, whose name was Rispa, the daughter of Aiah, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone in unto my father's concubine? 8. Then was Abner very angry because of the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head, which against Judah does show kindness this day unto the house of Saul your father? to his brethren, and to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hand of David, that you charge me today with a fault concerning this woman. 9. So do God to Abner, and more also, except, as the Lord has sworn to David, even so I do to him, tend to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. 11. And he could not answer Abner a word again, because he feared him. 12 And Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make your league with me, and, behold, my hand shall be with you, to bring about all Israel unto you. 13 And he said, Well, I will make a league with you, but one thing I require of you, that is, you shall not see my face, except you first bring Nihal Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. 14 And David sent messengers to Ishbosheth Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife Michal, whom I betrothed to myself for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. 15 And Ishbosheth sent, and took her from her husband, even from Paltiel the son of Laish. 16 And her husband went with her along weeping behind her to Bahurim. Then said Abner unto him, Go, return. And he returned. 17 And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, You sought for David in times past to be king over you. 18 Now then do it. For the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David the first will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines, and out of the hand of all their enemies. 19 And Abner also spoke in the ears of Benjamin, and Abner went also to speak in the hearing of David in Hebron all that seemed good to Israel, and that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. Twenty so Abner came to David to Hebron, and twenty men with him. And David made Abner and the men that were with him a feast. Twenty one and Abner said unto David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make a league with you, and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. 22 And, behold, the servants of David and Joab came from pursuing a troop, and brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. 23 When Joab and all the host that were with him were come, they told Joab, saying, Abner the son of Ner came to the king, and he has sent him away, and he is gone in peace. 24 Then Joab came to the king, and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came unto you, why is it that you have sent him away, and he is quite gone? 25 You know Abner the son of Ner, that he came to deceive you, and to know your going out and your coming in, and to know all that you do. 26 And when Joab had come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, who brought him again from the well of Sarah, but David knew it not. 27 And when Abner had returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly, and struck him there under the fifth rib, so that he died, for the blood of Asahel his brother. 28 And afterward when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever from the blood of Abner the son of Ner. 29 Let it rest on the head of Joab, and on all his father's house, and let there not fail from the house of Joab one that has an issue, 
or that is a leper, or that leans on a staff, or that falls on the sword, or that lacks bread. 30 So Joab and Abishai his brother slew Abner, because he had slain their brother Asahel at Gibeon in the battle. 31 And David said to Joab, and to all the people that were with him, Tear your clothes, and gird you with sackcloth, and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the coffin. 32 And they buried Abner in Hebron, and the king lifted up his voice, and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. 33 And the king lamented over Abner, and said, Died Abner as a fool dies. 34 Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into fetters. As a man falls before wicked men, so fell you. And all the people wept again over him. 35 And when all the people came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David swore, saying, So do God to me, and more also, if I taste bread, or anything else, till the sun be down. 36 And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatsoever the king did pleased all the people. 37 For all the people in all Israel understood that day that it was not of the king to slay Abner the son of Ner. 38 And the king said unto his servants, Know you not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel? 39 And I am this day weak, though anointed king, and these men the sons of Zeruiah are too hard for me, the Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Chapter 4 The Murder of Ishbosheth. 1 And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands were feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. 2 And Saul's son had two men that were captains of bands, the name of the one was Bana, and the name of the other Rechab, the sons of Rimen a Berothite, of the children of Benjamin, for Beroth also was reckoned to Benjamin. 3 And the Berothites fled to Gidim, and were sojourners there until this day. 4 And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel, and his nurse took him up, and fled. And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell, and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. Five and the sons of Rimen the Berothite, Rechab and Bana, went, and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who lay on a bed at noon. Six and they came there into the midst of the house, as though they would have gotten wheat and they struck him under the fifth rib, and Rechab and Bana his brother escaped. 7 For when they came into the house, he lay on his bed in his bedchamber, and they struck him, and slew him, and beheaded him, and took his head, and got themselves away through the plain all night. 8 And they brought the head of Ishbosheth unto David to Hebron, and said to the king, Behold the head of Ishbosheth the son of Saul your enemy, who sought your life, and the Lord has avenged my Lord the king this day of Saul, and of his descendants' judgment on the murder of Ishbesheth. 9 And David answered Rechab and Bana his brother, the sons of Rimen the Berothite, and said unto them, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my soul out of all adversity, 10 When one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him, and slew him in Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings, eleven how much more, when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed. Shall I not therefore now require his blood of your hand, and take you away from the earth? Twelve and David commanded his young men, and they slew them, and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up over the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the sepulcher of Abner in Hebron. Chapter 5. David is anointed as king over Israel. One then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and spoke, saying, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. Two also in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were he that led out and brought in Israel. And the Lord said to you, You shall feed my people Israel, and you shall be a captain over Israel. Three so all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. 4 David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. 5 In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all Israel and Judah. Conquest of Jerusalem
6 And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spoke unto David, saying, Except you take away the blind and the lame, you shall not come in here, thinking, David cannot come in here. 7 Nevertheless David took the stronghold of Zion, the same as the city of David. 8 And David said on that day, Whosoever gets up the water shaft, and strikes the Jebusites, and the lame and the blind, that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Therefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. 9 So David dwelt in the fort, and called it the city of David. And David built all around from Millo inward. 10 And David went on, and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. Messengers from Tyre. 11 And Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons, and they built David a house. 12 And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. The family of David. 13 And David took himself more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem, after he was come from Hebron, and there were yet sons and daughters born to David. 14 And these are the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem, Shamua, and Shobab, and Nathan, and Solomon, 15 Ebar also, and Elishua, and Nepheg, and Japhia, 16 and Elishama, and Eliada, and Elipelet. Conquest of the Philistines. 17 But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David, and David heard of it, and went down to the stronghold. 18 The Philistines also came and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. 19 And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. 20 And David came to Baal-perazim, and David struck them there, and said, The Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me, as the breakthrough of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal-perazim. 21 And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. 22 And the Philistines came up yet again, and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. 23 And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, You shall not go up, but go around behind them, and come upon them opposite the mulberry trees. 24 And let it be, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then you shall move quickly, for then shall the Lord go out before you, to strike the army of the Philistines. 25 And David did so, as the Lord had commanded him, and struck the Philistines from Geba until you come to Gezer. Chapter 6. Wrongly bringing up the ark. 1 Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. 2 And David arose, and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts who dwells between the cherubim. 3 And they set the ark of God upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. 4 And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God, and Ahio went before the ark. 5 And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps, and on ps altaries, and on tambourines, and on castanets, and on cymbals. 6 And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God, and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. 7 And the anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his irreverence, and there he died by the ark of God. 8 And David was angry, because the Lord had made an outbreak against Uzzah, and he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. 9 And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? 10 So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. 11 And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom, and all his household. Rightly bringing up the ark. 12 And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom, 
and all that pertains unto him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. David rejoices over the ark of the Lord. 13 And it was so, that when they that bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. 14 And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. 15 So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting, and with the sound of the trumpet. Michal despises David. 16 And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal Saul's daughter looked through a window, and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. 17 And they brought in the ark of the Lord, and set it in its place, in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. 18 And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. 19 And he distributed among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, both to the women and to the men, to every one a loaf of bread, and a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed every one to his house. 20 Then David returned to bless his household. And Michal the daughter of Saul came out to meet David, and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. 21 And David said unto Michal, It was before the Lord, who chose me before your father, and before all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel, therefore will I make merry before the Lord. 22 And I will yet be more contemptible than this, and will be abased in my own sight, and of the maid servants whom you have spoken, of them shall I be held in honor. 23 Therefore Michal the daughter of Saul had no child unto the day of her death. Chapter 7 David is forbidden to build God a house. 1 And it came to pass, when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest all around from all his enemies, to that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within curtains. 3 And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. God promises David an eternal house. 4 And it came to pass that night, that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, 5 Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Shall you build me a house for me to dwell in? 6 For I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. 7 In all the places in which I have moved about with all the children of Israel spoke I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why build you not me a house of cedar? 8 Now therefore so shall you say unto my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. 9 And I was with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies out of your sight, and have made you a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. 10 Moreover I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more, as before, eleven since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. Twelve and when your days be fulfilled, and you shall sleep with your fathers, I will set up your offspring after you, who shall proceed out of your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. Thirteen he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 14 I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. 15 But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before you. 16 And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you, your throne shall be established forever. 17 According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. David praises God. 
18 Then went King David in, and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house, that you have brought me thus far? 19 And this was yet a small thing in your sight, O Lord God, but you have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? 20 And what can David say more unto you? For you, Lord God, know your servant. 21 For your word's sake, and according to your own heart, have you done all these great things, to make your servant know them. 22 Therefore you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, neither is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. 23 And what one nation in the earth is like your people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make himself a name, and to do for you great things and awesome, for your land, before your people, whom you redeemed to yourself from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. 24 For you have confirmed to yourself your people Israel to be a people unto you forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. 25 And now, O Lord God, the word that you have spoken concerning your servant, and concerning his house, establish it forever, and do as you have said. 26 And let your name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel, and let the house of your servant David be established before you. 27 For you, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, have revealed to your servant, saying, I will build you a house, therefore has your servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto you. 28 And now, O Lord God, you are that God, and your words are true, and you have promised this goodness unto your servant. 29 Therefore now let it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before you, for you, O Lord God, have spoken it, and with your blessing let the house of your servant be blessed forever. Chapter 8. David Defeats the Philistines. 1 And after this it came to pass, that David struck the Philistines, and subdued them, and David took Methig Amma out of the hand of the Philistines. David defeats Moab. 2 And he struck Moab, and measured them with a line, casting them down to the ground, even with two lines measured he the ones to put to death, and with one full line the ones to keep alive. And so the Moabites became David's servants, and brought gifts. David defeats Zobah and Aaron. 3 David struck also Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his territory at the river Euphrates. 4 And David took from him a thousand chariots, and seven hundred horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen, and David hamstrung all the chariot horses, but reserved of them for a hundred chariots. 5 And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer king of Zobah, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. 6 Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David, and brought gifts. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. 7 And David took the shields of gold that were carried by the servants of Hadadezer, and brought them to Jerusalem. 8 And from Beda, and from Barotai, cities of Hadadezer, King David took very much bronze. David received spoil. 9 When Toy king of Hamath heard that David had defeated all the armies of Hadadezer, 10 Then Toy sent Joram his son unto King David, to greet him, and to bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer, and defeated him, for Hadadezer had wars with Toy. And Joram brought with him vessels of silver, and vessels of gold, and vessels of bronze, eleven which also King David did dedicate unto the Lord, with the silver and gold that he had dedicated of all nations which he subdued, twelve of Edom, and of Moab, and of the children of Ammon, and of the Philistines, and of Amalek, and of the spoil of Hadadezer, son of Rehob, king of Zobah. David's righteous rule over Israel. 13 And David got him a name when he returned from defeating of the Edomites in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men. 14 And he put garrisons in Edom, throughout all Edom put he garrisons, and all they of Edom became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. 15 And David reigned over all Israel, and David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. 16 And Joab the son of Zeruiah was over the army, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilud was recorder, 
17 and Zadok the son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, were the priests, and Sariah was the scribe. 18 and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and David's sons were chief rulers. Chapter 9. David's Kindness to Mephibosheth. 1 and David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? 2 and there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Are you Ziba? And he said, Your servant is he. 3 And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has yet a son, who is lame on his feet. 4 And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. 5 Then king David sent, and brought him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. 6 Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face, and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold your servant. 7 And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan your father's sake, and will restore you all the land of Saul your father, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. 8 And he bowed himself, and said, What is your servant, that you should look upon such a dead dog as I am? 9 Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto your master's son all that pertained to Saul and to all his house. 10 You therefore, and your sons, and your servants, shall till the land for him, and you shall bring in the fruits, that your master's son may have food to eat, but Mephibosheth your master's son shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. 11 Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so shall your servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table, as one of the king's sons. 12 And Mephibosheth had a young son, whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. 13 So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, and was lame in both his feet. Chapter 10. The Insult of Ammon. 1 And it came to pass after this, that the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanan his son reigned in his stead. 2 Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanan the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. 3 And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan their lord, Think you that David does honor your father, that he has sent comforters unto you? Has not David rather sent his servants unto you, to search the city, and to spy it out, and to overthrow it? For therefore Hanan took David's servants, and shaved off one half of their beards, and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. 5 When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards are grown, and then return. Ammon is smitten. 6 And when the children of Ammon saw that they had become repulsive before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob, and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen, and of King Maka 8,000 men, and of Ishtab 12,000 men. 7 And when David heard of it, he sent Joab, and all the army of the mighty men. 8 And the children of Ammon came out, and put the battle in array at the entrance of the gate, and the Syrians of Zobah, and of Rehob, and Ishtab, and Makkah, were by themselves in the field. 9 When Joab saw that the battle was set against him both before and behind, he chose some of all the choice men of Israel, and put them in array against the Syrians, 10 And the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. 11 And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then you shall help me, but if the children of Ammon be too strong for you, then I will come and help you. 12 Be of good courage, and let us play the man for our people, and for the cities of our God, 
and the Lord do that which seems to him good. 13 And Joab drew near, and the people that were with him, unto the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. 14 And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, then they also fled before Abishai, and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children of Ammon, and came to Jerusalem. Syria is smitten. 15 And when the Syrians saw that they were defeated before Israel, they gathered themselves together. 16 And Hatteras are sent, and brought out the Syrians that were beyond the river, and they came to Helam, and Shobach the captain of the army of Hatteras are went before them. 17 And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together, and passed over Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in array against David, and fought with him. 18 And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians, and forty thousand horsemen, and struck Shobach the captain of their army, who died there. 19 And when all the kings that were servants to Hatterizer saw that they were defeated before Israel, they made peace with Israel, and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon any more. Chapter 11 David sins with Bathsheba 1 And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab, and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. 2 And it came to pass in an evening, that David arose from off his bed, and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. 3 And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? 4 And David sent messengers, and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. 5 And the woman conceived, and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. Uriah does not go to his house. 6 And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. 7 And when Uriah was come unto him, David asked of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. 8 And David said to Uriah, Go down to your house, and wash your feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a present from the king. 9 But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. 10 And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Came you not from your journey? Why then did you not go down unto your house? 11 And Uriah said unto David, The ark, and Israel, and Judah, abide in tents, and my lord Joab, and the servants of my lord, are encamped in the open fields, shall I then go into my house, to eat and to drink, and to lie with my wife? As you live, and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. 12 And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let you depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day, and the morrow. 13 And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk, and at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his lord, but went not down to his house. David commands Uriah's murder. 14 And it came to pass in the morning, that David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. 15 And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire from him, that he may be struck down, and die. 16 And it came to pass, when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. 17 And the men of the city went out, and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. 18 Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. 19 And charged the messenger, saying, When you have finished telling the matters of the war unto the king, 20 And if so be that the king's anger arises, and he says unto you, Why approached you so near unto the city when you did fight? Knew you not that they would shoot from the wall? 21 Who struck Abimelech the son of Jerubasheth. 
Did not a woman cast a piece of a millstone upon him from the wall, that he died in Thebes? Why went you near the wall? Then say, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. 22 So the messenger went, and came and told David all that Joab had sent him for. 23 And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us, and came out unto us into the field, and we were upon them even unto the entrance of the gate. 24 And the shooters shot from off the wall upon your servants, and some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. 25 Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shall you say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease you, for the sword devours one as well as another. Make your battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and so encourage him. David takes Bathsheba as his wife. 26 And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. 27 And when the morning was past, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife, and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Chapter 12. Prophecy of the Sword. 1 And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him, and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich, and the other poor. 2 The rich man had a great many flocks and herds. 3 But the poor man had nothing, except one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him, and with his children. It did eat of his own food, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. For and there came a traveller unto the rich man, and he refused to take of his own flock and of his own herd, to prepare for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb, and prepared it for the man that was come to him. 5 And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. 6 And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. 7 And Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. 8 And I gave you your master's house, and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto you more things. 9 Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord, to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and have taken his wife to be your wife, and have slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. 10 Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. 11 Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes, and give them unto your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son. 12 For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, and before the son. David repents. 13 And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also has put away your sin, you shall not die. 14 However, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto you shall surely die. God takes away the son of the adultery. 15 And Nathan departed unto his house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore unto David, and it was very sick. 16 David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted, and went in, and lay all night upon the earth. 17 And the elders of his house arose, and went to him, to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. 18 And it came to pass on the seventh day, that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then harm himself, if we tell him that the child is dead? 19 But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. 20 Then David arose from the earth, and washed, and anointed himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord, and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he asked, 
they set food before him, and he did eat. Twenty-one then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that you have done? You did fast and weep for the child, while it was alive, but when the child was dead, you did rise and eat bread. Twenty-two and he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me, that the child may live? Twenty-three but now he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. God gives a second son. 24 And David comforted Bathsheba his wife, and went in unto her, and lay with her, and she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. 25 And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedidiah, because of the Lord. Joab's loyalty to David. 26 And Joab fought against Rabbah of the children of Ammon, and took the royal city. 27 And Joab sent messengers to David, and said, I have fought against Rabbah, and have taken the city of waters. 28 Now therefore gather the rest of the people together, and encamp against the city, and take it, lest I take the city, and it be called after my name. 29 And David gathered all the people together, and went to Rabbah, and fought against it, and took it. 30 And he took their king's crown from off his head, the weight of which was a talent of gold with the precious stones, and it was set on David's head. And he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance. 31 And he brought forth the people that were therein, and put them to work with saws, and with picks of iron, and with axes of iron, and made them toil at the brick kilns, and thus did he unto all the cities of the children of Ammon. So David and all the people returned unto Jerusalem. Chapter 13. Incest in the house of David. 1 And it came to pass after this, that Absalom the son of David had a beautiful sister, whose name was Tamar, and Ammon the son of David loved her. 2 And Ammon was so distressed, that he became sick over his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Ammon thought it improper for him to do anything to her. 3 But Ammon had a friend, whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. For and he said unto him, Why are you, being the king's son, so haggard from day to day? Will you not tell me? And Ammon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. 5 And Jonadab said unto him, Lay you down on your bed, and pretend to be sick, and when your father comes to see you, say unto him, I pray you, let my sister Tamar come, and give me food, and prepare the food in my sight, that I may see it, and eat it from her hand. 6 So Ammon lay down, and pretended to be sick, and when the king had come to see him, Ammon said unto the king, I pray you, let Tamar my sister come, and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat from her hand. 7 Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to your brother Amnon's house, and prepare him food. 8 So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was lying down. And she took flour, and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. 9 And she took a pan, and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Ammon said, Send out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. 10 And Ammon said unto Tamar, Bring the food into the chamber, that I may eat of your hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, and brought them into the chamber to Ammon her brother. 11 And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her, and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. 12 And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel, do not you this folly. 13 And I, where shall I cause my shame to go? And as for you, you shall be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore, I pray you, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from you. 14 However he would not hearken unto her voice, but, being stronger than she, forced her, and lay with her. 15 Then Ammon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Ammon said unto her, Arise, be gone. 16 And she said unto him, There is no cause, this evil in sending me away is greater than the other that you did unto me. 
but he would not hearken unto her. 17 Then he called his servant that ministered unto him, and said, Put now this woman out from me, and bolt the door after her. 18 And she had a garment of many colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins dressed. Then his servant brought her out, and bolted the door after her. 19 And Tamar put ashes on her head, and tore her garment of many colors that was on her, and laid her hand on her head, and went on crying. 20 And Absalom her brother said unto her, Hath Ammon your brother been with you? But hold now your peace, my sister, he is your brother, regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Ammon is murdered. 21 But when King David heard of all these things, he was very angry. 22 And Absalom spoke unto his brother Ammon neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Ammon, because he had forced his sister Tamar. 23 And it came to pass after two full years, that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazor, which is beside Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. 24 And Absalom came to the king, and said, Behold now, your servant has sheep shearers, let the king, I beseech you, and his servants go with your servant. 25 And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all now go, lest we be chargeable unto you. And he pressed him, however he would not go, but blessed him. 26 Then said Absalom, If not, I pray you, let my brother Ammon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with you? 27 But Absalom pressed him, that he let Ammon and all the king's sons go with him. 28 Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark you now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Strike Ammon, then kill him, fear not, have not I commanded you. Be courageous, and be valiant. 29 And the servants of Absalom did unto Ammon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got him up upon his mule, and fled. 30 And it came to pass, while they were in the way, that tidings came to David, saying, Absalom has slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. 31 Then the king arose, and tore his garments, and lay on the earth, and all his servants stood by with their clothes torn. 32 And Jonadab, the son of Shimea David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men the king's sons, for Ammon only is dead, for by the command of Absalom this has been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. 33 Now therefore let not my lord the king take the thing to his heart, to think that all the king's sons are dead, for Ammon only is dead. 34 But Absalom fled. And the young man that kept the watch lifted up his eyes, and looked, and, behold, there came many people by the way of the hillside behind him. 35 And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come, as your servant said, so it is. 36 And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of speaking, that, behold, the king's sons came, and lifted up their voice and wept, and the king also and all his servants wept very bitterly. The Flight of Absalom. 37 But Absalom fled, and went to Talmai, the son of Amahud, king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son every day. 38 So Absalom fled, and went to Geshur, and was there three years. 39 And the soul of King David longed to go forth unto Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Ammon, seeing he was dead. Chapter 14 The Return of Absalom 1 Now Joab the son of Zeruiah perceived that the king's heart went out toward Absalom. 2 And Joab sent to Tekoa, and brought from there a wise woman and said unto her, I pray you, pretend to be a mourner, and put on now mourning apparel, and anoint not yourself with oil, but be as a woman that had a long time mourned for the dead, three and come to the king, and speak in this manner unto him. So Joab put the words in her mouth. For and when the woman of Tekoa spoke to the king, she fell on her face to the ground, and pained him honor, and said, Help, O king. Five and the king said unto her, What ails you? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman, and my husband is dead. Six and your handmaid had two sons, and they two strove together in the field, 
and there was none to part them, but the one struck the other, and slew him. 7 And, behold, the whole family is risen against your handmaid, and they said, Deliver him that struck his brother, that we may kill him, for the life of his brother whom he slew, and we will destroy the heir also. And so they shall quench my ember which is left, and shall not leave to my husband either name or remnant upon the earth. 8 And the king said unto the woman, Go to your house, and I will give orders concerning you. 9 And the woman of Tekoa said unto the king, My lord, O king, the iniquity be on me, and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be guiltless. 10 And the king said, Whosoever says anything unto you, bring him to me, and he shall not touch you any more. 11 Then said she, I pray you, let the king remember the Lord your God, that you would not allow the revengers of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord lives, there shall not one hair of your son fall to the earth. 12 Then the woman said, Let your handmaid, I pray you, speak one word unto my lord the king. And he said, Say on. 13 And the woman said, Why then have you thought such a thing against the people of God? For the king does speak this thing as one who is faulty, in that the king does not bring home again his banished one. 14 For we must needs die, and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither does God respect any person, yet does he devise means, that his banished one be not expelled from him. 15 Now therefore that I am come to speak of this thing unto my lord the king, it is because the people have made me afraid. And your handmaid said, I will now speak unto the king, it may be that the king will perform the request of his handmaid. 16 For the king will hear, to deliver his handmaid out of the hand of the man that would destroy me and my son together out of the inheritance of God. 17 Then your handmaid said, The word of my lord the king shall now be comfortable. For as an angel of God, so is my lord the king to discern good and bad, therefore the lord your God will be with you. 18 Then the king answered and said unto the woman, Hide not from me, I pray you, the thing that I shall ask you. And the woman said, Let my lord the king now speak. 19 And the king said, Is not the hand of Joab with you in all this? And the woman answered and said, As your soul lives, my lord the king, None can turn to the right hand or to the left from anything that my lord the king has spoken. For your servant Joab, he bade me, and he put all these words in the mouth of your handmaid. Twenty to bring about this change of affairs has your servant Joab done this thing. And my lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. Twenty one and the king said unto Joab, Behold now, I have done this thing. Go therefore, bring the young man Absalom again. 22 And Joab fell to the ground on his face, and bowed himself, and thanked the king. And Joab said, Today your servant knows that I have found grace in your sight, my lord, O king, in that the king has fulfilled the request of his servant. 23 So Joab arose and went to Geshur, and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. 24 And the king said, let him turn to his own house, and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house, and saw not the king's face. Absalom's Deception 25 But in all Israel there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty, from the sole of his foot even to the crown of his head there was no blemish in him. 26 And when he cut the hair of his head, for it was at every year's end that he cut it, because the hair was heavy on him, therefore he cut it, he weighed the hair of his head at two hundred shekels after the king's weight. 27 And unto Absalom there were born three sons, and one daughter, whose name was Tamar, she was a woman of a fair countenance. 28 So Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem, and saw not the king's face. 29 Therefore Absalom sent for Joab, to have sent him to the king, but he would not come to him and when he sent again the second time, he would not come. Thirty therefore he said unto his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and he has barley there, go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Thirty one then Joab arose, and came to Absalom unto his house, and said unto him, Why have your servants set my field on fire? Thirty two and Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent unto you, saying, Come here, 
that I may send you to the king, to say, why am I come from Gesher? It had been good for me to have been there still, now therefore let me see the king's face, and if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. 33 So Joab came to the king, and told him, and when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king, and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. Chapter 15 One and it came to pass after this, that Absalom prepared himself chariots and horses, and fifty men to run before him. Two and Absalom rose up early, and stood beside the way of the gate, and it was so, that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him, and said, Of what city are you? And he said, Your servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. 3 And Absalom said unto him, See, your matters are good and right, but there is no man appointed of the king to hear you. 4 Absalom said moreover, O oh that I were made judge in the land, that every man who has any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. 5 And it was so, that when any man came near to him to bow down to him, he put forth his hand, and took him, and kissed him. 6 And in this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment, so Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. The Conspiracy of Absalom 7 And it came to pass after forty years, that Absalom said unto the king, I pray you, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto the Lord, in Hebron. 8 For your servant vowed a vow while I abode at Geshur in Aram, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. 9 And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he arose, and went to Hebron. 10 But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigns in Hebron. 11 And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem, that were called, and they went along innocently, and they knew not anything. Twelve and Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Gilonite, David's counselor, from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. David flees. Thirteen and there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel have gone after Absalom. 14 And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom, make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring evil upon us, and strike the city with the edge of the sword. 15 And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, your servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall command. 16 And the king went forth, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women, who were concubines, to keep the house. Seventeen And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. Eighteen And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Cherethites, and all the Pelethites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men who came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Nineteen Then said the king to Ittai the Gittite, Why go you also with us? Return to your place, and abide with the king, for you are a stranger, and also an exile. Twenty you came only yesterday, should I this day make you go up and down with us? Seeing I go where I may, return you, and take back your brethren, mercy and truth be with you. Twenty one and Ittai answered the king, and said, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, surely in what place my lord the king shall be? whether in death or life, even there also will your servant be. 22 And David said to Ittai, Go and pass over. And Ittai the Gittite passed over, and all his men, and all the little ones that were with him. 23 And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people passed over, the king also himself passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people passed over, toward the way of the wilderness. 24 And lo Zadok also, and all the Levites were with him, bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God, and they set down the Ark of God, and Abiathar went up, until all the people had all passed out of the city. 25 And the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the Ark of God into the city, if I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again, and show me both it, 
and his habitation. 26 But if he thus says, I have no delight in you, behold, here am I, let him do to me as seems good unto him. 27 The king said also unto Zadok the priest, Are not you a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimaaz your son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. 28 C. I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness, until there come word from you to inform me. 29 Zadok therefore and Abiathar carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. 30 And David went up by the ascent of Mount Olivet, and wept as he went up, and had his head covered, and he went barefoot, and all the people that were with him covered every man his head, and they went up, weeping as they went up. 31 And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray you, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. 32 And it came to pass, that when David was come to the top of the mount, where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat torn, and earth upon his head. 33 Unto whom David said, If you go on with me, then you shall be a burden unto me. 34 But if you return to the city, and say unto Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I have been your father's servant in time past, so will I now also be your servant, then you may for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. 35 And have you not there with you Zadok and Abiathar the priests? Therefore it shall be, that whatsoever thing you shall hear out of the king's house, you shall tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. 36 Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimaaz Zadok's son, and Jonathan Abiathar's son, and by them you shall send unto me everything that you can hear. 37 Sahushai David's friend came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Chapter 16 One and when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba the servant of Mephibosheth met him, with a couple of donkeys saddled, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a hundred bunches of raisins, and a hundred summer fruits, and a skin of wine. Two and the king said unto Ziba, What mean you by these? And Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine, that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. Three and the king said, And where is your master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abides at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. For then said the king to Ziba, Behold, all that belonged unto Mephibosheth are yours. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech you that I may find grace in your sight, my lord, O king. 5 And when king David came to Bahurim, behold, there came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Jerah. He came forth, and cursed continually as he came. 6 And he cast stones at David, and at all the servants of King David, and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. 7 And thus said Shimei when he cursed, Come out, come out, you bloody man, and you man of Belial. 8 The Lord has returned upon you all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned, and the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom your son and, behold, you are taken in your mischief, because you are a bloody man. 9 Then said Abishai the son of Zeruiah unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray you, and take off his head. 10 And the king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because the Lord has said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Why have you done so? 11 And David said to Abishai, and to all his servants, Behold, my son, who came forth of my own body, seeks my life, how much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord has bidden him. 12 It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction, and that the Lord will repay me good for his cursing this day. 13 And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hill's side opposite him, and cursed as he went, and threw stones at him, and cast dust. Fourteen and the king, and all the people that were with him, became weary, and refreshed themselves there. The reign of Absalom.
15 and Absalom, and all the people the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with him. 16 And it came to pass, when Hushai the archite, David's friend, was come unto Absalom, that Hushai said unto Absalom, God save the king, God save the king. 17 And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your kindness to your friend? Why went you not with your friend? 18 And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord, and this people, and all the men of Israel, choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. 19 And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in your father's presence, so will I be in your presence. 20 Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. 21 And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto your father's concubines, which he has left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that you are abhorred by your father, then shall the hands of all that are with you be strong. 22 So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. 23 And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God, so was all the counsel of Ahithophel both with David and with Absalom. Chapter 17 One moreover Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night, to and I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed, and will make him afraid, and all the people that are with him shall flee, and I will strike the king only, three and I will bring back all the people unto you, only the man whom you seek will be struck, so all the people shall be in peace. Four and the saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. Five then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he says. 6 And when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spoke unto him, saying, Ahithophel has spoken after this manner, shall we do after his saying? If not, speak you. 7 And Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good at this time. 8 4, said Hushai, You know your father and his men, that they are mighty men, and they are chafed in their minds, as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field, and your father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. 9 Behold, he is hid now in some pit, or in some other place, and it will come to pass, when some of the people fall at the first attack, that whosoever hears it will say, there is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. 10 And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt, for all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and they who are with him are valiant men. 11 Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto you, from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that you go to battle in your own person. 12 So shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and we will light upon him as the dew falls on the ground, and of him and of all the men that are with him there shall not be left so much as one. 13 Moreover, if he has gotten into a city, then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river, until there be not one small stone found there. 14 And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had purposed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel, to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. 15 Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, Thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. 16 Now therefore send quickly, and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up, and all the people that are with him. 17 Now Jonathan and Ahimaaz stayed by En-Rogel, for they dared not be seen to come into the city, and a maidservant went and told them, and they went and told King David. 18 Nevertheless a lad saw them, and told Absalom, but they went both of them away quickly, and came to a man's house in Bahurim, who had a well in his court, and they went down into it. 19 And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth, and spread ground grain thereon, and the thing was not known. 20 And when Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house, they said, Where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? 
And the woman said unto them, They are gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. 21 And it came to pass, after they were departed, that they came up out of the well, and went and told King David, and said unto David, Arise, and pass quickly over the water, for thus has Ahithophel counseled against you. 22 Then David arose, and all the people that were with him, and they passed over Jordan. By the morning light there was left not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. 23 And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey, and arose, and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order, and hanged himself, and died, and was buried in the sepulchre of his father. 24 Then David came to Mahanaim. And Absalom passed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. 25 And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab, which Amasa was a man's son, whose name was Ithra an Israelite, that went into Abigail the daughter of Nahash, sister to Zeruiah Joab's mother. 26 So Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead. 27 And it came to pass, when David was come to Mahanaim, that Shobi the son of Nahash of Rabbah of the children of Ammon, and Makir the son of Amiel of Lodabar, and Barzillai the Gileadite of Rogalim, twenty-eight brought beds, and basins, and earthen vessels, and wheat, and barley, and flour, and parched grain, and beans, and lentils, and parched seed, twenty-nine and honey, and butter, and sheep, and cheese of cows, for David, and for the people that were with him, to eat, for they said, the people are hungry and weary, and thirsty, in the wilderness. Chapter 18, Absalom is slain. 1 And David numbered the people that were with him, and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. 2 And David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab, and a third part under the hand of Abishai the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Ittai the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. 3 But the people answered, You shall not go forth, for if we flee away, they will not care for us, neither if half of us die, will they care for us, but now you are worth ten thousand of us, therefore now it is better that you support us from out of the city. 4 And the king said unto them, What seems to you best I will do? And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. 5 And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains the charge concerning Absalom. 6 of the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the forest of Ephraim, 7 Where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David, and there was there a great slaughter that day of twenty thousand men. 8 For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the forest devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. 9 And Absalom met the servants of David. And Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. 10 And a certain man saw it, and told Joab, and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in an oak. 11 And Joab said unto the man that told him, And, behold, you saw him, and why did you not strike him there to the ground? And I would have given you ten shekels of silver, and a belt. 12 And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing the king charged you and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. 13 Otherwise I should have dealt falsely against my own life, for there is no matter hid from the king, and you yourself would have set yourself against me. 14 Then said Joab, I cannot tarry thus with you. And he took three spears in his hand, and thrust them through the heart of Absalom, while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. 15 And ten young men that bore Joab's armor compassed about and struck Absalom, and slew him. 16 And Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel, for Joab held back the people. 17 And they took Absalom, and cast him into a great pit in the wood, 
and laid a very great heap of stones upon him, and all Israel fled every one to his tent. 18 Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's valley, for he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance, and he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called unto this day, Absalom's pillar. 19 Then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok, Let me now run, and bear the king tidings, how that the Lord has avenged him of his enemies. 20 And Joab said unto him, You shall not bear tidings this day, but you shall bear tidings another day, but this day you shall bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. 21 Then said Joab to Cushi, Go tell the king what you have seen. And Cushi bowed himself unto Joab, and ran. 22 Then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok yet again to Joab, Come what may, let me, I pray you, also run after Cushi. And Joab said, Why will you run, my son, seeing that you have no tidings ready? 23 Come what may, said he, let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain, and outran Cushi. 24 And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate unto the wall, and lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold a man running alone. 25 And the watchman cried, and told the king. And the king said, If he is alone, there are tidings in his mouth. And he came rapidly, and drew near. 26 And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the gatekeeper, and said, Behold another man running alone. And the king said, He also brings tidings. 27 And the watchman said, I think the running of the first one is like the running of Ahimaaz the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and comes with good tidings. 28 And Ahimaaz called, and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king, and said, Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. 29 And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, and me your servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. 30 And the king said unto him, Turn aside, and stand here. And he turned aside, and stood still. 31 And, behold, Cushi came, and Cushi said, Tidings, my lord the king, for the Lord has avenged you this day of all them that rose up against you. 32 And the king said unto Cushi, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushi answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against you to do you hurt, be as that young man is. 33 And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate, and wept, and as he went, thus he said, O my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom. Would God I had died for you, O Absalom, my son, my son. Chapter 19. Joab reproves the king. 1 And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weeps and mourns for Absalom. 2 And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people, for the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. 3 And the people stole back that day into the city, as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. 4 But the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O my son Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. 5 And Joab came into the house to the king, and said, You have shamed this day the faces of all your servants, who this day have saved your life, and the lives of your sons and of your daughters, and the lives of your wives, and the lives of your concubines, six in that you love your enemies, and hate your friends. For you have declared this day, that you regard neither princes nor servants, for this day I perceive, that if Absalom had lived, and all we had died this day, then it would have pleased you well. 7 Now therefore arise, go forth, and speak kindly unto your servants, for I swear by the Lord, if you go not forth, there will not tarry one with you this night, and that will be worse unto you than all the evil that befell you from your youth until now. David is restored. 8 Then the king arose, and sat in the gate. And they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king does sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. 
Nine and all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines, and now he has fled out of the land because of Absalom. Ten and Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore why speak you not a word of bringing the king back? Eleven and King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing the speech of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house. Twelve you are my brethren, you are my bones and my flesh, why then are you the last to bring back the king? Thirteen and say you to Amasa, Are you not of my bone, and of my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if you be not captain of the army before me continually in the place of Joab. 14 And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, Return you, and all your servants. 15 So the king returned, and came to Jordan. And Judah came to Gilgal, to go to meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. 16 And Shimei the son of Jera, a Benjamite, who was of Bahurim, hurried and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. Seventeen and there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him, and they went over Jordan before the king. Eighteen and there went over a ferryboat to carry over the king's household, and to do what he thought good. And Shimei the son of Jerah fell down before the king, as he was come over Jordan, 19 And said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do you remember that which your servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. 20 For your servant does know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. 21 But Abishai the son of Zeruiah answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? 22 And David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah, that you should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? 23 Therefore the king said unto Shimei, You shall not die. And the king swore unto him. 24 And Mephibosheth the son of Saul came down to meet the king, and had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. 25 And it came to pass, when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Why went you not with me, Mephibosheth? 26 And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for your servant said, I will saddle me a donkey, that I may ride thereon, and go to the king, because your servant is lame. 27 And he has slandered your servant unto my lord the king, but my lord the king is as an angel of God, do therefore what is good in your eyes. 28 For all of my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king, yet did you set your servant among them that did eat at your own table. What right therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king? 29 And the king said unto him, Why speak you any more of your matters? I have said, You and Ziba divide the land. 30 And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all, for as much as my lord the king is come again in peace unto his own house. 31 And Barzillai the Gileadite came down from Rogalim, and went over Jordan with the king, to conduct him over Jordan. 32 Now Barzillai was a very aged man even fourscore years old, and he had provided the king with supplies while he lay at Mahanaim, for he was a very great man. 33 And the king said unto Barzillai, Come you over with me, and I will feed you with me in Jerusalem. 34 And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live, that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? 35 I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good and evil? Can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? 36 Your servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king, and why should the king recompense me with such a reward? 
37 Let your servant, I pray you, turn back again, that I may die in my own city, and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. But behold your servant Chimham, let him go over with my lord the king, and do to him what shall seem good unto you. 38 And the king answered, Chimham shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto you, and whatsoever you shall ask of me, that will I do for you. 39 And all the people went over Jordan. And when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillai, and blessed him, and he returned unto his own place. 40 Then the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him, and all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. 41 And, behold, all the men of Israel came to the king, and said unto the king, Why have our brethren the men of Judah stolen you away, and have brought the king, and his household, and all David's men with him, over Jordan? 42 And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is near of kin to us, why then are you angry for this matter? Have we eaten at all of the king's cost? Or has he given us any gift? 43 And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, and said, We have ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than you. Why then did you despise us, since our advice was first in bringing back our king? And the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Chapter 20 One and there happened to be there a man of Belial, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite, and he blew a trumpet, and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse, every man to his tents, O Israel. To so every man of Israel went up from after David, and followed Sheba the son of Bichri, but the men of Judah remained loyal to their king, from Jordan even to Jerusalem. 3 And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in confinement, and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. For then said the king to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and you be here present. 5 So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. 6 And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Bichri do us more harm than did Absalom. Take you your lord's servants, and pursue after him, lest he get himself fortified cities, and escape us. 7 And there went out after him Joab's men, and the Cherethites, and the Pelethites, and all the mighty men, and they went out of Jerusalem, to pursue after Sheba the son of Bichri. 8 When they were at the great stone which is in Gibeon, Amasa came before them. And Joab's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and upon it a belt with a sword fastened upon his loins in the sheath thereof, and as he went forth it fell out. 9 And Joab said to Amasa, Are you in health, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. 10 But Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand, so he struck him with it in the fifth rib, and shed out his entrails to the ground, and struck him not again, and he died. So Joab and Abishai his brother pursued after Sheba the son of Bichri. Eleven and one of Joab's men stood by him, and said, He that favors Joab, and he that is for David, let him go after Joab. Twelve and Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway. And when the man saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the highway into the field, and cast a cloth upon him, when he saw that every one that came by him stood still. 13 When he was removed out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab, to pursue after Sheba the son of Bichri. 14 And he went through all the tribes of Israel unto Abel, and to Beth Maka, and all the Barites, and they were gathered together, and went also after him. 15 And they came and besieged him in Abel of Beth Macha, and they cast up a mound against the city, and it stood against the rampart, and all the people that were with Joab battered the wall, to throw it down. 16 Then cried a wise woman out of the city, Here, here, say, I pray you, unto Joab, come near here, that I may speak with you. 17 And when he was come near unto her, the woman said, Are you Joab? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of your handmaid. 
And he answered, I do hear. 18 Then she spoke, saying, They used to speak in former time, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel, and so they ended the matter. 19 I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. You seek to destroy a city and a mother in Israel, why will you swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? 20 And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me, that I should swallow up or destroy. 21 The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba the son of Bichri by name, has lifted up his hand against the king, even against David, deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to you over the wall. 22 Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom. And they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab. And he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent. And Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. 23 Now Joab was over all the army of Israel, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites and over the Pelethites, 24 and Adoram was over the forced labor, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilud was recorder, 25 and Sheba was scribe, and Zadok and Abiathar were the priests, 26 and Ira also the Jairite was a chief minister under David. Chapter 21, Famine. 1 Then there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is for Saul, and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. 2 And the king called the Gibeonites, and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites, and the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. 3 Therefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And with what shall I make the atonement? that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord. For and the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shall you kill any man in Israel. And he said, What you shall say, that will I do for you. Five and they answered the king, The man that consumed us, and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the territory of Israel, six let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. 7 But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan the son of Saul. 8 But the king took the two sons of Rispa the daughter of Aiah, whom she bore unto Saul, Armani and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Merab the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel the son of Barzillai the Maholathite. 9 And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. 10 And Rispa the daughter of Aya took sackcloth, and spread it for her upon the rock, from the beginning of harvest until water dropped upon them out of heaven and allowed neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. 11 And it was told David what Rispa the daughter of Aiah, the concubine of Saul, had done. 12 And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from the men of Jabesh Gilead, who had stolen them from the street of Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hanged them, when the Philistines had slain Saul in Gilboa. 13 And he brought up from there the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son, and they gathered the bones of them that were hanged. 14 And the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son buried they in the country of Benjamin in Zila, in the sepulchre of Kish his father, and they performed all that the king commanded. And after that God heeded prayers for the land. War with the Philistines. 15 Moreover the Philistines had yet war again with Israel, and David went down, and his servants with him, and fought against the Philistines, and David grew faint. 16 And Ishbi Benob, who was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear was three hundred shekels of bronze in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to slay David. 17 But Abishai the son of Zeruiah aided him, and struck the Philistine, and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, 
saying, You shall go no more out with us to battle, that you quench not the light of Israel. 18 And it came to pass after this, that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibachai the Hushathite slew Saph, who was of the sons of the giant. 19 And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan the son of jar Orejim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. 20 And there was yet again a battle in Gath, where there was a man of great stature, that had on every hand six fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. 21 And when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimei the brother of David slew him. 22 These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David, and by the hand of his servants. Chapter 22, Psalm of Thanksgiving. 1 And David spoke unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies, and out of the hand of Saul. 2 And he said, The Lord is my rock, and my fortress, and my deliverer, 3 The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. 4 I will call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. 5 When the waves of death surrounded me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. 6 The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me, the snares of death confronted me. 7 In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried to my God. And he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. 8 Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations of heaven moved and shook, because he was angry. 9 There went up smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured, coals were kindled by it. 10 He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. 11 And he rode upon a cherub, and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. 12 And he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters, and thick clouds of the skies. 13 Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. 14 The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. 15 And he sent out arrows, and scattered them, lightning, and vanquished them. 16 And the channels of the sea appeared, the foundations of the world were discovered, at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. 17 He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. 18 He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. 19 They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. 20 He brought me forth also into a broad place, he delivered me, because he delighted in me. 21 The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands has he recompensed me. 22 For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. 23 For all his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. 24 I was also upright before him, and have kept myself from my iniquity. 25 Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. 26 With the merciful you will show yourself merciful, and with the upright man you will show yourself upright. 27 With the pure you will show yourself pure, and with the devious you will show yourself shrewd. 28 And the afflicted people you will save, but your eyes are upon the haughty, that you may bring them down. 29 For you are my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will enlighten my darkness. 30 For by you I can run against a troop, by my God have I leapt over a wall. 31 As for God, his way is perfect, the word of the Lord is proven. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. 32 For who is God, except the Lord? And who is a rock, except our God? 33 God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. 34 He makes my feet like hind's feet, and sets me upon my high places. 35 He teaches my hands to make war, so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. 36 You have also given me the shield of your salvation, and your gentleness has made me great. 37 You have enlarged my path under me, 
so that my feet did not slip. 38 I have pursued my enemies, and destroyed them, and turned not again until I had consumed them. 39 And I have consumed them, and wounded them, that they could not arise, yea, they are fallen under my feet. 40 For you have girded me with strength to battle, them that rose up against me have you subdued under me. 41 You have also given me the necks of my enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. 42 They looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 43 Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth, I did stamp them as the mire of the street, and did spread them abroad. 44 You also have delivered me from the strivings of my people, you have kept me to be head of the nations, a people whom I knew not shall serve me. 45 Strangers shall submit themselves unto me, as soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. 46 Strangers shall fade away, and they shall be afraid coming out of their hiding places. 47 The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be God, the rock of my salvation. 48 It is God that avenges me, and that brings down the people under me, 49 And that brings me forth from my enemies. You also have lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me, you have delivered me from the violent man. 50 Therefore I will give thanks unto you, O Lord, among the nations, and I will sing praises unto your name. 51 He is the tower of salvation for his king, and shows mercy to his anointed, unto David, and to his descendants forevermore. Chapter 23. 1 Now these are the last words of David. David the son of Jesse said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, to the Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was in my tongue. 3 The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spoke to me, he that rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. 4 And he shall be as the light of the morning, when the sun rises, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth, by clear shining after rain. 5. Although my house be not so with God, yet he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things, and sure, for this is all my salvation, and all my desire, although he makes it not to grow. 6. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. 7 But the man that shall touch them must be armed with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they shall be utterly burned with fire in their place. The Deeds of David's Mighty Men 8 These are the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tachmanite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, the same was Adino the Easy Knight, he lifted up his spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. 9 And after him was Eliezer the son of Dodo the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel had gone away, ten he arose, and struck the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand stuck to the sword, and the Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to plunder. Eleven and after him was Shammah the son of Agi the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop, where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. Twelve but he stood in the middle of the field, and defended it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Thirteen and three of the thirty chief men went down, and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam, and the troop of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. Fourteen and David was then in a stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. 15 And David longed, and said, O oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. 16 And the three mighty men broke through the host of the Philistines, and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem, that was by the gate, and took it, and brought it to David. Nevertheless he would not drink it, but poured it out unto the Lord. 17 And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. 18 And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among another three. 
and he lifted up his spear against three hundred, and slew them, and had the name among these three. Nineteen was he not most honorable of three. Therefore he was their captain, however he attained not unto the first three. Twenty and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man, of Kabazil, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like heroes of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in a time of snow. Twenty-one and he slew an Egyptian, a handsome man, and the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a staff, and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and slew him with his own spear. Twenty-two these things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and won a name among three mighty men. Twenty-three he was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not to the first three. And David set him over his guard. Twenty-four Asahel the brother of Joab was one of the thirty, Elhanan the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, twenty-five Shammah the Herodite, Elika the Herodite, twenty-six Helas the Paltite, Ira the son of Ikish the Tekoit, twenty-seven Abizar the Anathathite, Mibunai the Hushathite, twenty-eight Zalman the Ahohite, Maharai the Netophathite, twenty-nine Helab the son of Bana, a Netophathite, Ittai the son of Ribai out of Gibeah of the children of Benjamin, thirty Benaiah the Pirathonite, Hiddai of the brooks of Gosh, thirty-one Abi Alban the Arbathite, Asmabath the Barumit. Thirty-two Eliab of the Shalbanite, of the sons of Jashan, Jonathan, thirty-three Shama the Hararite, Ahiam the son of Sherer the Hararite, thirty-four Elipelet the son of Ahasphi, the son of the Mashathite, Eliam the son of Ahithophel the Gilanite, thirty-five Hezro the Carmelite, Parai the Arbit, thirty-six Igal the son of Nathan of Zobah, Bani the Gadit, thirty-seven Zelik the Ammonite, Naharai the Birothite, Armorber to Joab the son of Zeruiah, 38 Ira and Ithrite, Gareb and Ithrite, 39 Uriah the Hittite, 30 and 7 in all. Chapter 24, The Census and the Plague. One and again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. 2 For the king said to Joab the captain of the host, who was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel from Dan even to Beersheba, and number you the people, that I may know the number of the people. 3 And Joab said unto the king, Now the Lord your God add unto the people, however many they may be, a hundredfold, and that the eyes of my lord the king may see it, but why does my lord the king delight in this thing? 4 Nevertheless the king's word prevailed against Joab, and against the captains of the army. And Joab and the captains of the army went out from the presence of the king, to number the people of Israel. 5 And they passed over Jordan, and encamped in Aroer, on the right side of the city that lies in the midst of the valley of Gad, and toward Jazer. 6 Then they came to Gilead, and to the land of Totem Hadshi, and they came to Danyan, and around to Sidon. 7 And came to the stronghold of Tyre and to all the cities of the Havites, and of the Canaanites, and they went out to the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. 8 So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. 9 And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto the king, and there were in Israel eight hundred thousand valiant men that drew the sword, and the men of Judah were five hundred thousand men. 10 And David's heart condemned him after he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done, and now, I beseech you, O Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. 11 And when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, 12 Go and say unto David, Thus says the Lord, I offer you three things, choose you one of them, that I may do it unto you. 13 So Gad came to David, and told him, and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto you in your land? Or will you flee three months before your enemies, while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days pestilence in your land? Now consider, and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. 14 And David said unto Gad, I am in a great distress, let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of man. 15 So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed, 
and there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba seventy thousand men. 16 And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord turned from the destruction, and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough, stay now your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. 17 And David spoke unto the Lord when he saw the angel that struck the people, and said, Lo, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly, but these sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray you, be against me, and against my father's house. 18 And Gad came that day to David, and said unto him, Go up, erect an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. 19 And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. 20 And Arana looked, and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him, and Arana went out, and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. 21 And Arana said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy your threshing floor, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. 22 And Arana said unto David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seems good unto him. Behold, here are oxen for burnt sacrifice, and threshing instruments and yokes of the oxen for wood. 23 All these things, O king, Arana gives unto the king. And Arana said unto the king, The Lord your God accept you. 24 And the king said unto Arana, Nay, but I will surely buy it from you at a price, neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. 25 And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord heeded supplications for the land, and the plague was stayed from Israel.